Welcome to part one of a series I'm calling the seven days to die insane nightmare survival guide. I was going to make this one video going over three powerful character builds that you can use on insane nightmare but it ended up being far too long so I figured I'd split part one of this series into three parts and I've called this first character build the brute and it is the bread and butter of any insane nightmare player. If you've never played insane nightmare I'd recommend starting here. But the build will still serve you very well, even if you're just looking to play on lower difficulties. The Brute is a strength build with a strong focus on winning fights, mainly when outnumbered and detected. And the secondary focus of the build is gathering resources and base building, making it a very straightforward brute force build. You don't need to know the game's minutiae to make this build work. There's no clever tricks, there's no real mechanical skill, it just works. Now if you're already a very experienced player, you probably don't actually need this video if I'm going to be 100% honest. It's probably the build you've been using, but I wanted to make this video so that newer players can get that classic build under their belt to really just help them out on harder difficulties, but do stick around, you might just pick up some tips, and I'm also going to be making two more build videos in this series which are a little bit less self-explanatory. So before we get into the exact skill point allocations and the gear you'll use, let's just go over the general playstyle of the build. Remember, I'm talking about this within the context of Insane Nightmare so if you're going to be using this on lower difficulties, you can play a lot more carelessly, so the playstyle section isn't going to be so strict for you. So as with any start of a 7 days to die playthrough, you're going to want to do your tutorial to get your 4 starting skill points. But after your starter quests, you're going to want to grind out fetch jobs to get easy money, XP, quest rewards, access to higher tier jobs and a bicycle. When completing the fetch jobs, just grab the bag and run, you're not getting paid by the hour here. If you run out of fetches, feel free to try out the clear jobs, but remember, you're not very strong at the start of the game in Insane Nightmare, so you are risking it if you're not as confident in your early game gameplay. I'd also avoid buried supplies on Insane Nightmare, getting swarmed by 3 zombies on the first stay while you're knee deep in terrain is kind of just asking to die, so avoid that unless you have a strategy you like to use there. Overall, you're doing pretty good if you can get a couple days worth of tier 3 jobs done before your first horde night. I wouldn't really bother going into tier 4s for the first week, just grind out those tier 3s until you get some of the better rewards that this character build can get. Two main priorities here are a level 3 or better steel club and a decent double barrel shotgun. You can get both of those as a tier 3 reward for the first horde night. But if you're slower, don't worry about it. You'll still survive if you remember to use your strength and your base to your advantage. If the trader has any wooden cobble, buy it and build yourself a complete completely fresh horde base from scratch for very easy XP, and I mean build it on like night one. Make it next to a big rock so that you can mine stone and clay at night to get more cobblestone to upgrade your horde base even more. It'll really save your life if a dire wolf or a wandering horde shows up. You can go out at night and clear PYs if you want, but remember ferals do a base of 50 damage on insane nightmare and they spawn at night. Your loot stage will be terrible, so unless you're specifically going after a wrench or a cooking pot or something like that and you haven't been able to find it during the day, I'd recommend just sticking to your base and mining and building at night. By the way, keep an eye out for a wrench or a forge schematic in this build. You may want to craft a baseball bat or something like that before doing your tier 3 jobs. In general though, you'll want to go around and find as many traders as you can so that you can check their inventories and get more tier 1, tier 2 and tier 3 complete rewards. You'll definitely want a bicycle for one of the tier 1 completes. From your tier 2 completes, you're going to want to look out for a nail gun, and for your tier 3 completes, you're going to want to look out for chemistry stations. Those are probably the most valuable things that you'll be able to get from your early completion rewards. Once you find yourself with tier 4 jobs and have at least a double barrel shotgun and a good baseball bat or preferably a good steel club, go ahead and start grinding them out. In particular, you're looking for good pump action shotguns, which are a great weapon choice for your mid game. If you're playing Insane Nightmare, I would recommend you just stay away from tier 5 jobs in general. They're not worth the trouble in my opinion. You can get 3 to 4 tier 4s done in the same amount of time, and once you get to tier 4 complete at a trader, I'd recommend you stop leveling that trader until you get Dating Adventurer to rank 4, because you'll get a double reward for the tier 5 complete if you wait for it. You can get the tier 5 complete 5 times in any playthrough, 
So making sure you wait until you have Dating Adventurer 4 before getting it is a good choice so that you can get 10 fantastic reward items instead of just 5. Just in case you didn't know, you do not have to complete any tier 5 jobs to actually get the tier 5 complete reward. You can do it by doing a lot of tier 4s instead, which is more worthwhile in my opinion. Particular rewards that this build wants for its tier 5 completes are the Legendary Auto Shotgun Bundle, which will give you a guaranteed level 6 auto shotgun, and you'll also want the Steel Armor Bonus Bundle, which will provide you with a full set of level 5 to 6 Steel Armor, which on this difficulty setting for this build is a really strong choice. Remember, this is a brute force build, you're most likely going to take hits, so using Steel Armor once you get it is a good idea. Getting Dating Adventurer to level 4 before you get to tier 5 complete means you'll be able to take 2 rewards for the price of 1. Even if you get the 2 bundles you want, you should probably still work on getting all those traders to tier 5 complete over the course of your playthrough because it can give you some of the best gear and items you can get in the game. The last thing you have to keep in mind with this playstyle is that it takes advantage of mining perks. So make sure you use them and build an extensive beefy base so your resources aren't wasted and you'll get a lot of free levels for doing what this build is meant to do. Now the actual combat style for this build doesn't really need much elaboration, it is called the Brute. You'll be building for a character that can just beat every issue with heavy armor, shotguns and either clubs or sledgehammers. Hit things with your weapons and outbox everything, it's pretty simple. So let's move on to the gear section. Now given how tied gear was to the playstyle, I'll try and keep some of this short. You want to get padded armor as soon as possible until you get that steel armor which I mentioned earlier. With steel armor and banded armor plates, you'll want to get the heavy armor perk at some point and get customized fittings to counteract the mobility issues. If you personally dislike heavy armor, go ahead and use military armor, but that doesn't cater to this build style as well. Like I said earlier as well, you'll want a steel club or a sledgehammer, or at least the best you can find as your main melee weapon. My recommendation here is the club. They're very stamina efficient, have a good swing speed, and the knockdown bonuses they get from their perk later on are pretty insane. You can combine it with the metal chain mod and the weighted head mod, pretty much knock down every zombie you fight until you get to that later radiated tier of zombies, which have a resistance to decapitation and knockdowns. One other thing that gives clubs an edge over axes and sledgehammers is the flurry of blows perk in the agility tree, which you can use to get even more stamina on kill and get a considerable boost to your DPS. Sledges along with iron or steel axes are not affected by the flurry of blows perk. Also, clubs have a dedicated skill book, which has one of the most broken completion bonuses in the game, with every power attack kill completely restoring your stamina. Axes and sledgehammers have no dedicated books, but the club is genuinely easy mode if you can get that completion bonus. So for versatility and sheer potential, the club wins here. But if you really like sledgehammers, go ahead and use them, they work, and the bonus chance to decapitate is nice and their crowd control is really good as well. Axes will not benefit from anything other than bonus base damage and they get a few tiny boosts from books here and there, but they really are not a competitive choice here, especially on higher difficulties. Same goes for shovels and pickaxes, you absolute weirdos. The club's utterly busted skill book and their unique modifications, which give you either armor penetration, bleed or knockdown, are a clear winner in my experience and opinion. I'll still have someone in the comments explaining why they think axes are better, but I've given up on changing those people's minds. If all the things I just said didn't change your mind as to why you should be using either clubs or sledgehammers, what else can I tell you? For your primary ranged weapon, you'll want the best shotgun that you can get at any moment. Like I said, that legendary auto shotgun bundle will help you a lot and will be your end goal for weapons. I was going to tell you every single perk choice for each level, but I thought for efficiency's sake, I would make this little chart so you can just grab it and go and I'll explain some of the choices as we go if you want to hear them. First of all, the early game on this chart refers to level 1 to 22 and that's how many levels I usually have on default XP by the end of the first horde on Insane Nightmare. If you're faster than that, great. If you're slower than that, that's great too. If getting to level 22 takes you 5 days, it doesn't matter. If getting to level 22 takes you 21 days, it doesn't matter. The game scales with you. Mid game is the rest of the points up until level 51. For the mid game section of the chart, the order of the perks isn't actually that important, it's mostly just stuff to grab as soon as you want it. The build uses Sexual Tyrannosaurus for extra stamina efficiency, it really lets it keep fighting forever. And remember, you can get the batter up completion bonus to basically attack infinitely with your 
club with sexual tyrannosaurus. This stamina efficiency and crazy stun lock really keeps clubs competitive for much longer than most of the other melee weapons. You'll obviously want Pummel Pete for the damage boost to your club and increased knockdown chance, and the damage it gives you to knock down enemies, which really gives the build its survivability, as most of the enemies you fight are just going to get knocked down on the first power attack. Miner 69er and Mother Load, along with the Art of Mining skill book, are a big part of this build as well. Try and buy yourself an auger as soon as possible so that you'll have all the resources you need to make ammo and base defenses. This build is literally as efficient as it gets for mining once you max out Mother Load and, and Miner 69er later in the game, so make sure you're using that aspect of the build to your advantage. Boomstick is for your shotguns to get that stun chance which on Insane Nightmare is really helpful. Demolitions Expert 1 and Master Chef 1 are just to unlock pipe bombs along with boiled meat and coffee respectively. Both of these perks are purely convenience based so if you don't want to get them that's fine, it just means you won't have to wait to find those particularly annoying schematics. Boiled meat is a great early game healing item giving you much more health than grilled meat or charred meat. Coffee is really good for mining once you have the skill book that gives it the boost and it's really good for stamina regen. And if you didn't know, pipe bombs are essentially just a free win on Horde Knight. They'll stay competitive throughout your entire playthrough, guaranteed. They are a lot more efficient on Insane Difficulty than either your club or your shotgun on Horde Knight. You spam them out and the pipe bombs will kill everything, and your base should be able to take it as long as it's better than at least wood. Then in the mid game, we want to rush Daring Adventurer 4 for the reasons I said earlier, and you want to make sure that your skill investment into getting into like this high isn't simply a waste of time, so you'll want to backfill better barter for easy access to things like augers, crucibles, and vehicles, and advanced engineering to really maximise the efficiency of those reasons resources as it reduces the cost of recipes at the forge. And then you'll want to get your intellect to 10 since you've come this far and backfill advanced engineering and better barter again. And then if you want you can grab all of physician since this build is really designed to just smash through its problems you can use physician to outheal anything, negating any need for farming or any fortitude perks or any kind of advanced cooking. With the last rank of physician a first aid bandage will restore about 50 health which is the equivalent of 10 hits from normal zombies on this difficulty assuming you're wearing steel armour, 5 hits from ferals or heavy zombies, but do keep in mind that the irradiated biker will probably still be able to outbox you, so you'll want to eliminate them extremely quickly with your shotgun whenever the time arises, which is where that stun bonus is really going to come in handy. Moving into the end game for this build, you can really take it wherever you want. It's probably worth doubling back and at least getting strength to 7 and maxing out all the perks that come with that, including your heavy armour, but it might not be worth going all the way to 10 because you're really only going to get level 5 clubs and shotguns with that and that is a lot of skill point investment for essentially one rank of two different perks. Instead, pivoting a little bit and putting those points into agility and grabbing a flurry of blows, running and gun and parkour is a really good choice for this build as parkour is just a really good perk Run and Gun is going to be good for your shotgun, and Flurry of Blows is going to be really good for your club. You can also get yourself Gunslinger and start using pistols here and there if you want to. Alternatively, another good choice is Perception, where you can max out Demolitions Expert and Salvage Operations. Salvage Operations will give you all the scrap you need to make loads of traps, or you can sell it off for massive profits, which you can then turn into bullet casings, even if you ran out of other things to buy. And Demolitions Expert is of course going to make those pipe bombs even more useful, and at that point if you want to switch to contact grenades or a rocket launcher, that's also an option. If you want to pivot and go for fortitude and farming with passive healing and damage resistance, you can, and machine guns are a really good boost to this build, but it's really not as helpful as perception or agility, because your heavy armour and physician are going to be a lot more effective at doing what the fortitude perks do, the cost of way less skill points. The Brute is a build defined by its namesake, Brutality. You can simply crush every problem you see with your speed, firepower, and sheer physical strength. And on Horde Knights, your castle will be the most durable because you can just auger out all the resources you need to make that thing as strong as you need it to be. Some of you might think, wait a minute, this build has 10 intellect. Isn't that a bit weird to call it a brute? But no. The name brute refers more to the playstyle than the actual build because it's been designed to allow you to basically be as dumb as you want and just win every fight anyway. It's simple, it's effective, and it always gets the job done. There are very few combinations of enemies that can outbox this build in the endgame. The only things you'll have to really worry about in the endgame are going to be zombie bears and irradiated bikers, because they both have stupid amounts of health and do crazy amounts of damage. But whenever you do encounter them, 
your shotgun should be able to handle it. But don't take my word for it, get out there and give it a try. I'll have the early game and mid game perk sheet linked in the description for you to save and refer to. And remember, this doesn't need to be played on Insane Nightmare, it does work with any difficulty. Just some of the things about this build may be overkill on, say, warrior difficulty with walking zombies. Thank you to my channel members for making these videos possible, and thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.